Good evening. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to this audience of worship. It is good to be together, albeit virtually. But it's good to see your faces. It is good to know that we are together to worship in spirit and in truth. So on this night, Monday, Thursday, there's a few things I want to share as a way of both welcome, but also introduction to how we'll be worshiping tonight. First, a reminder that you need to mute your sound, your microphones on your computers or phones so that we only have the worship leaders to be heard and the other sounds that would come uh, might be distracting, so we'd like to avoid that. So we ask for your help there. Secondly, we hope that you have communion elements with you, for this is the first of what will at least be two times, as we know we're going to do this again on Easter Sunday, in which we are having virtual communion. And that means everybody brings their own elements, your own bread, your own fruit of the vine in the cup, and uh, we will be sharing and partaking of the sacrament of communion a little bit later on in this service. But you need to have your elements ready now so that you can partake when we join in together at that point in the service. Now we're going to take a few moments, as we always do when we gather for worship, to pause and to be still, remember who and whose we are, and remember that we are here to worship God after which we will enter into the service of worship. And I hope and pray that it is a time of blessing for you, as tonight, on this Monday, Thursday, in this Holy Week, we gather in this way to worship God. And now we will join our hearts in the call to worship that you will see on the screen right in front of you. If any of the words are blocked, you can move the little pictures so that you can see all the words. On this very holy night together, let us worship God. Jesus said, you will live in love as you keep my commandment. And the people said, we will live in Jesus' love. We will keep this commandment. We will love one another as Jesus loves us. Let us worship God. we come is with an awareness of our own fallenness. That we say that we make mistakes, that we are not all that we could or should be. Yet, we also know as we come. Yeah, I have the service if you're interested. That we have a God who loves us, and cares for us and longs to forgive our sin. So together, let us come to God our sin, for our confession, and then after we pray, we will then close with the time of silent prayer. Here as I lead us in praying. Holy Jesus, you are love incarnate, and this holy week you show us the way 
yourself living love. You call us to follow you and to love one another. Yet we betray and deny you as we fail to love each other as you love us. For all the ways we have betrayed you and ourselves, forgive us. Help us to grow in love and to walk in your way. Amen. Friends, hear the good news of the assurance of pardon. God so loved the world. God, this week, gives the only Son that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have life, rich, eternal, abundant, and yes, everlasting. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And now we will hear the first scripture lesson. You can read along on your screen or listen now for a word from the Lord that comes to us from Psalm 116, verses 1 and 2, and then again, 12 through 19. Listen to a word from God. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of of all his people precious in the sight of the lord is the death of his faithful ones O oh lord i am your servant i am your servant the child of your serving girl you have loosed my bonds i will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the lord i will pay my vows to the lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Now we hear our second scripture lesson. This comes to us from the gospel according to Matthew, 26th chapter, verses 26 through 30. It is Matthew's telling of the institution of the Lord's Supper, which happened on the very first Monday, Thursday. Hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Listen for the word of God. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink it of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What makes this night different from all the other nights. It's the very first question that's asked in the celebration and observance of the Passover Seder. A meal that is a meal of remembrance, a meal 
that remembers how God liberated God's people out of slavery in Egypt. Just last night, Jewish families all over the world, and particularly in this country, gathered not unlike the way we are gathering tonight, virtually, sharing their holy meal, their holy service, and the Passover. It's a service, every single bit of which is designed to remember the story. Every bit of the food is linked to a part of the story that the story might be made alive again in their hearts, in their memories. And we know of how that works in our own families, in our own institutions, in our own communities. We remember and link things so that we might make the memory alive. I know in, in my own family, particularly my mom's family, for us, when we would gather together, there'd be a lot that would happen. But we would not know how we were really gathered together until that moment that would come every time we were together. There'd be many meals, but there'd always be one special meal. It would be the meal before which we gather in a great big circle. And my granddaddy Hall would lead a prayer that he, I found out later, completely stole from the Episcopalians. Bless, O Lord, this food to our use and us to thy service. And make us ever mindful of the needs of others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And in that prayer, and in that big circle that even now, though we've lost quite a few folks, we've gained many and the circle isn't broken. The prayer makes the memory. And in my own family, I, I wanted to have some kind of table grace for our family, for me and Paul and Philip. And when we moved here, Philip was in kindergarten and he was at the age where I figured it was time where he could learn such a prayer. I had a conversation with Ellen Bird, whom some of you may well remember. She was on the search committee that called me here, a preacher's wife like none other. And when I told her what I was wanting to do, she gave us a prayer. Turns out it was a Merovian prayer. The prayer goes, come, Lord Jesus, our guest to be, and bless these gifts bestowed by thee. Bless all your children everywhere and keep us in your loving care. Amen. We still pray it. It's the gift that keeps giving, that, that continues to make memory come alive. And in the same way Jesus took this meal this Passover meal that they shared that night, him and his disciples. And as they shared the meal, they went through the story of the Passover, as good and faithful Jews all do when they share the Passover. But then Jesus took the ordinary parts of the meal that, that weren't necessarily part of the Passover story, but were very much part of their lives. Bread, wine, and Jesus infused into those ordinary elements an extraordinary thing, himself. He made it a memory about him and his relationship to his disciples. He made it a memory about him and his love and his command that he commanded this night. I would get that name, Maundy Thursday derived from the word that we use for a command, Mondi. The command is to love one another. And this is a meal of love, of self-giving love, a meal in which Jesus 
offers his body and his blood for us, as we shall see in just 24 hours, as we shall live and experience in those hours between Good Friday and the Easter that the disciples of Jesus did not know it was coming yet. Ordinary bread, ordinary cup, but extraordinary love. That make this a, a loaf of love, a cup, a meal of love. As we share this meal tonight, each in our own homes, Remembering the story, keeping the memory alive. Most of all, let us share love. For this is a meal, a holy meal of love in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Holy God, through all this technology, move with your spirit that we might live remembering you. Live remembering that you have commanded us to love. And in the sharing of this meal, may it be a meal of love your love, the love you give us in your son, Jesus, this week, especially. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, now that we are at the time of sharing communion together, I want to remind us that every year at this service, it's the one where we actually move the communion table so that we are down on, on the floor in the sanctuary, not up on the chancel. And people come together in groups of eight or 12 where the bells or the choir scooch in and it's 16 or it's 18 or it's whoever, there's always room at that table. And every year at that table, we look at each other in the eye when we pass these elements. And there is something really connected about this particular time when we share communion together because we are looking at each other. We are around a table and, and when we do it in the sanctuary, it's a reenactment of being at a table as if we were in our own homes. And tonight we're not acting like we're in our own homes, we actually are. And in scripture, um, whenever we have the invitation, I like to remind us of the story of the walk to Emmaus when those terrified and bereaved and scared of everything disciples we're walking along the road to Emmaus and the stranger walked along with them. It was not until they went into someone's house, they went into a house, they went into someone's house, not a generic house of worship. They went into someone's actual house and they broke bread together. And that was when the disciples recognized their Lord and Savior there in their midst. And while it is not something that we are used to, and we pray for how many different pains this season, this Lent has brought for people, we have a chance to be at our actual tables tonight, to invite people uh, uh, who have moved away and have joined us here on these screens, 
we have a chance to invite people who have real physical disabilities that make it hard for them to travel. We have people who don't like driving at night, but they can do this. And the table has room and we make room. So tonight, wherever you may be, whether that wherever you are physically, if you're in your basement like I am, uh, wherever you are emotionally, maybe you've been all over the place today, wherever you are spiritually this year, 2020, let's gather around that table. You are invited and our Lord has bid us to come. Let us share the Lord. This night we'll be sharing the meal, <clears throat> however you have the elements ready to do it. This is a really a la carte Lord's Supper, but it is a time in which we will share the ordinary bread and cup that our Lord makes extraordinary. And as we do, every time we share this meal, we remember to pray the great prayer of thanksgiving. Together, let's pray to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, we praise you. Let the heavens be joyful. Let the earth be glad. We bless you for creating the whole world, for your promises to your people, Israel, and for Jesus Christ, in whom your fullness, your love dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. And risen from the dead, he gives new life. Living with you, he prays for us. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, with thanksgiving, we take this bread and this cup to proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. Receive our sacrifice of praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this meal may be a communion in the body and blood of our Lord. Make us one with Christ and with all who share in this meal. Unite us in faith, encourage us with hope, inspire us to love, that we may serve as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. For we praise you, eternal God, through Christ, your word made flesh, in the holy and life-giving spirit, now and forever, praying, with the confidence of the children of God in the way your son taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we heard earlier, the Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, was at table with his disciples. And there he took bread. And after giving thanks, he blessed this bread. And he broke it. Saying to his disciples, all who were with him, take, eat, 
This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, our Lord took the cup. And said, this cup is the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins sealed in my blood. Drink this, each of you, in remembrance of me. And we remember, too, how the Apostle Paul has told us, every time we eat of this bread, every time we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. This is the bread of heaven. This is the cup of salvation. And these are the gifts of God for the people of God here at this table and at your table for all our tables tonight are the Lord's table. Let us share in this meal, this holy meal of our Lord. Go now in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Strengthen the faint hearted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the incredible fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with you and abide in you this day and forevermore. Amen. And go in peace. Go in peace. Amen. Blessings, everybody. Go in peace. Go in peace. Blessings to all of you. Blessings. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ, yes. Blessings to all. Peace of Christ be with you. Blessings to all. Blessings to you. Peace, everybody. <laughs>